Meanwhile, in a dead end far, far away. Ahoy, everybody, and welcome back to Dead End Restorations, part seven of Project E34, the Fluid Fest episode. We're gonna be doing the tranny fluid, the diff fluid, the clutch fluid, and some other odds and ends, like the toast power steering pump, the V8 motor mounts, because why not, we're in there, and a pesky remaining exhaust hanger. So grab yourself some goggles, let's go for a dive. Ow, that hurts. All right, we're gonna start underneath the car first. We gotta loosen this belt, get rid of the crappy leaky power steering pump, and then we can get to our crusty, crusty, and wonderfully crispy motor mount over here, and then on the other one, on the other side. Andale. All right, belt is off. Now it's time to drain this for the third time. Love the smell of power steering in the evening. And out comes the offending bastard. All right, so how do you know your old power steering pump is bad? Well, it's easy, obviously, now that it's off the car. If you guys watch part five, I believe, I'll put a link in the description. You hear a screeching noise when you're giving, when you're giving revs and turning the wheel, you hear a high-pitched screeching noise. Cue here. Otherwise, when it's off the car, the new one doesn't have any play when you go up and down this way. Tiny, tiny bit of play, but minimal. You can't hear anything. Listen to this one. So clearly something is loose there and it's not quite as tight as it should be. This one's going in the trash, but before we do that, we gotta take off this long bolt and transfer it here, and obviously the pulley. Now don't play around too much with this bolt here. This is basically an adjuster for kind of the angle of the pump so that it can be in line with your belt. So leave that where it was. Oh, that guy was on there tight. Transfer that over. Good, that's done. If you got one of these rubber filter wrenches or you can reuse your old belt, I just don't wanna ruin my new belt doing this. Slip this on, squeeze it nice and tight. And there we go. Very elegant, let's clean our pulley. Get the strap on back on. You can pack your strap on away. With the pump out of the way, it's time to get rid of the motor mount. First, we're gonna undo each side from below. Then we're gonna place a wooden block under the engine, lift each side one at a time, and undo them from the top. All right, so we've got a 17 mil over here and a 13 mil over here. And it's the exact same story on the other side, 13 and a 17. All right, now that both sides are loosened, time to raise the motor. This is where you say a prayer and hope for the best. This is my shredded in half motor mount. Nish nish, leaking something. Let me take you up top. So you basically take 17 extensions. You go kind of in between the power steering reservoir and the engine. And now that it's nicely raised, all the way down there, and there's no way you're gonna see it, down there somewhere is the top of that bolt. And now what I'm gonna do is basically rotate this, get it undone, take it out of the way, slop in the new one, and repeat this process. Let's head down below. Slip on the new motor mount. First, we gotta raise the motor some more. Make sure you're putting this in on the right side because they are slightly lopsided, obviously. First, I'm gonna see if I can get top one threaded in a little bit and then drop this down. All right, let's see if I can start getting this threaded through here. Yes. All right. That's threaded in a little bit so that it's hanging. All right, we've tightened up at the top. Now it's time to drop this down into the home. All right, it's rinse and repeat on this side. 
Now I've left those other motor mounts loose just because we're going to be lifting one side of the engine but the whole thing kind of moves so you don't want to tear your brand new motor mount just yet. We're going to lift this a little bit and then come at it from the top just like we did last time. Now on the passenger side you want to take out the air box, swing this windshield washer fluid bottle out of the way and check out the view on this side. What a thing of beauty. There is the top bolt easily accessible. So we're going to undo that one, get it out of the way. So believe it or not, this is where you actually get the motor mount through, through the top. New motor mount, top view. The bolt is just threaded a bit. All right, there it is. It's in the holes, time to drop the motor. This side is actually way, way, way easier than the, than the driver's side. Like a glove. And from above, there's the bolt right there. Tighten that down, tighten down the bottom ones, and we are good to go. Torque spec for the 13 mil is 16 foot pounds. Torque spec for the 17 mil, 33 foot pounds. Done. Time to put the power steering pump back in. All right, sit rep. Belts are back in. That cooling hose is back in. All the belts have been tightened. Gonna head up top, fill up the reservoir, and this job is finito. All right, so we've got our power steering fluid all topped up. That's done. Next thing we're gonna do is the clutch. Now, is the clutch broken? No. Is it working fine? Yeah, more or less. However, this is one of those things where this is a car that's you know going on 30 years old, zero service records, probably a good thing to change all the fluids while we're in here. And let me show you why. Because if you leave this and it's really gunky and old, it has a very good chance of ruining your clutch master cylinder or slave cylinder, which are much more expensive and harder to fix than just swapping out the fluids. Let me show you. Here's the lovely state of our brake fluid in the clutch reservoir. Clearly, it's got some residue gunk in there. You don't want this stuff going through your master cylinder or the slave cylinder. Eventually, they will fail. So we're going to tackle this next. Now, earlier I was using a super fancy $29 Amazon compressor brake siphoner. Here is the $1 version. Basically take something like this off of a, I don't know, whatever this was, soap canister. I don't know what it was. Stick some quarter inch tubing on there, dunk it into your brake fluid and give it some pumps. Well, it's a little more in there. Let's see if I can get more. There you go, $1 fluid pump. As simple and as cheap as it gets. All right, so what's the state of our fluid? The fluid's not terrible, actually, uh, but let's see how much gunk there is inside here. Oh yeah, see all that black stuff at the bottom? Now we're gonna clean this out. I'm just gonna start sticking in some shop towels and sucking this up. And here's the after view. Once it's all cleaned up, ready for new fluid. Now, which fluid goes in here, you might be asking? Well, the brake fluid on this was a dot four. And if you look on this cap, which you can't see anything on, it says J1703, which is 90s speak for dot three. If you Google it, that's what you get. So we're gonna put some dot three in here. That's enough to start. All right, so now we are gonna bust out our fancy $29 extraction tool, get our spectacles and step into my office. All right, so the nipple in question is this guy. Pop that off, and there is our bleeder screw. Now I wanna loosen him a little bit. Stick him on there, and then let's loosen him a little more. And there we go. Now let's start siphoning. Lots of fluid came out. Let's check up top if we need to top up more. All right, I pumped the clutch a bunch of times. Let's do some more. All right, the fluid that's coming out looks very, very clean. Time to close this up. Now let's go pump and get some pressure back in the lines. All right, so after about five minutes of pumping by hand, I just cracked this nut a tiny bit to let out a bit of air. Pumped it up a bit more by another minute or so by hand and foot. Now it is nice and firm. Topped up the fluids up at the top. Time to put this grommet back on. And that is the clutch bled. Surprisingly relatively painless if you've got the right tools. All right, next up on our fluid fest bucket list is the manual transmission. 
Now there's a fill plug here and a drain plug down here. First thing we're gonna do is crack open the fill plug because again, if that's seized and this drains, you are shit out of luck, my friend, and you've got a dry transmission. So first, let's get this guy open. I think some WD is in order. All right, we'll let that do its thing. Oh yes, here we go. It's time like these, you yearn for a four post lift or a two post or any kind of lift. Now let's do the pinky test and see if there's any oil in there. So the good news is it's not bone dry, but at least we're gonna flush it out. Now for this one, I definitely am enlisting the help of the breaking bad bar. No problem. You're living up to your reputation, Breaking Bad Bar. That's got a reddish hue, although it's mostly brown. ATF should be pretty bright red, but let's have a look once it all drains. That's enough pissing around for one night. The fill and the drain plug are 37 foot-pounds. Now, why do people love Liquamoly so much? Well, I'm going to show you one very simple and practical reason why. Stick that in and squeeze. Apologies if you can't see much. All right, there's one bottle down. Now bottle number two. Basically, we're gonna squeeze it until some starts pouring out and that's how you know it's full. And there we go. Dripping out the sides. Put the fill plug back in. And this job is also done. Last step, the rear diff. All right, so on my way to getting to the diff, I noticed a couple issues. This one I knew about. Over here, we've got a torn hanger for the exhaust. That one I knew about and I ordered one. However, this guy has also broken. So right now the exhaust is a bit of a low rider situation. So I'm gonna fix this one on this side because it's much harder to access. I'm gonna order a new one for this side and fix that one later. Time to get the jack. See if I can remove this guy first. So he's not getting in our way. There's one. Can I just cut through this guy? What do you think? Nope, I'm gonna slip him up and over. Anyway, that's the van damage. Here's a fresh one. Oh yes, up and over. And now let's lift the exhaust and then we'll stick this guy. Come on, stretchy bastard. I'm gonna need a screwdriver. And up and over. Now it looks like we've gotta drop it a little bit because there's not enough clearance there. There we go, we're in business. All right, let's drop it fully and see how she rests. All right, it's not ideal for long term, but like I said, I'm gonna order one of these for the other side and we'll get that fixed up. Now let's move on to the final piece, the diff. Right, finally, we're at the rear diff. You've got the fill hole over here and the drain plug over here. Now, I bought this 14 mil socket a couple months back and I'm kind of kicking myself for getting it because, look at that, it doesn't fit. It's too long. It fits on this side, maybe, but even then probably won't be able to get my tool in here. So I picked up a stubby set off Amazon and that slots in perfectly right there and on the other side. So my recommendation is if you're ever getting hex, large hex pieces like this, always get stubby ones. You never know when you're gonna be working in tight spaces. Enough talk. First, let's undo the fill, then the drain and get this over with. Let's see if I can get a pry bar on the back of this. Well, at least the good news is it has fluid. Let's do the same pry bar trick on this side. Time to plug it up. Manual says 50 foot pounds. Now let's get our liquid molly extender. In you go. All right, that's one down. Oh, it's still going. How much jam you got, man? All right, we're getting a good stream spilling out. Time to plug it up. Every E34 diff is gonna be different. This one, I believe, is 1.7 liter capacity. 
Dunzo. And now the shot we've all been waiting for. The brake fluid from the clutch, the ATF from the manual transmission, the 7590 gear oil from the rear diff. Now, none of these parts were broken, everything was actually working, but if you have a look at the color, the viscosity, obviously it's gonna run a lot, a lot better with fresh fluids. I'd say this is more a lesson in preventative maintenance more than anything. I can't wait to take the car out for a spin now. It should feel like a brand new car again. All right, now if any of you have not subscribed yet, I'm gonna give you one really good reason why you should, and that is next episode, this dirty, stinky, unwashed, half the clips missing, mechanically A1 perfect turd is gonna go for a nice road trip along the busiest highway in North America to a friend of mine who's got a paint shop. I'm gonna get a quote, we're gonna go over the whole car, I'll take you along for a nice shakedown drive, and we're gonna see just how mechanically sorted out this car is after several, several months of me kind of pouring over every mechanical detail. So it might look like it's worth exactly $1 less than the day I bought it, but it doesn't matter. It should feel and drive spectacular, and I can't wait to find out. So I'll leave you guys with that. Till next time, adios.